gender diversity and gender equality are the key drivers, are among the key drivers of academic excellence. And as a university that is committed to excellence in research and excellence in education, we're absolutely certain that by having a commitment to gender equality, we will really enhance the excellence in all of our activity, especially in our research and in our education. There are solutions. And that's what I'm interested in the college engaging in, in solutions to get gender balance throughout all the academic grades, uh, because this will mean the college performs better as an institution. In the strategic plan uh, that was published just a couple of months ago, Trinity has committed not only to being, uh, to embedding in all of its practices and policies, gender equality, inclusion and diversity, but we've also committed to demonstrating institutional leadership nationally and internationally in this regard. And the way we will do this is through having a significant commitment to transformation of the institution ensuring that gender equality is absolutely a key driver of transformational change in the university. So my personal commitment really is valuable only in so far as it translates to an institutional commitment to gender diversity and something that I want to see pursued in the future. Benchmarking means sort of in some ways catching up with the best, but we want to get better than the best. And that's where we, where we aim to go. Integer is a project that uh, Trinity is involved with with four other European partners, uh, which is really about driving institutional change in very practical ways. It involves focusing on academic leadership in the university and ensuring that there's gender equality there. It uh, is focused on ensuring that there it, we set targets and achieve targets in terms of the numbers of women in professorial and leadership positions in the university. And it's also about embedding cultural change throughout the university to ensure that women are supported and mentored and promoted on the basis of merit. One of the things that has come across to me from Integer is not just quantifying the problem in terms of the numbers of um, women versus men in various different roles, uh, but saying there are ways we can change this. There are deeper issues that we can uh, look into and resolve when it comes to ensuring gender diversity in college. So it, it has helped focus the college community on issues relating to gender diversity, but more than that, it has put solutions on the table and engage the senior leadership of the college in pursuing those solutions. One of the things that WISER has done has been to ensure that we are aware of the importance of statistics and of having accurate information about women and their uh, progress through the academic system. Uh, we we know that we can't change what we can't measure. And uh, where we have gathered data that is disaggregated on the basis of gender, we begin to see that there is a very different career path and progression for women as for men. We need to understand at each point why it is that women are not progressing as quickly um, or as seamlessly as men uh, because it's clear that they are performing as well in terms of their research, in terms of the kind of teaching they do, in terms of the leadership roles that they um, provide in the college and yet we don't quite understand why it is that we don't see as many women as men at the uh, professorial level, for example. The Athena Swan Award is a prestigious award for uh, institutions, universities, that have uh, achieved to a certain uh, benchmark, to a certain extent, in uh, gender balance in their uh, academic profile. It's very important, um, not only for what it is in itself, but in providing a modality for achieving that for universities like Trinity College. I'm very proud that Trinity really has been the lead in bringing the Athena Swan Charter to Ireland. Professor Eileen Drew has really taken the lead on this and convinced not only Trinity, but the whole of the higher education sector in Ireland that we need to be part of what is a very challenging but and dynamic but transformational process, which involves 
each institution setting very specific goals for itself in terms of gender equality, each year improving on those so that it's not just about ticking boxes, it's really about constant evolution and change and constant improvement. And uh, the Athena Swan is the vehicle through which we will do that. The impact in the long term of Trinity's involvement in Athena Swan will be to change the culture of Trinity and I believe other Irish universities as well when it comes to uh, gender balance in the academic staff. We know from the research and from the literature that uh, there is what we call an unconscious bias evident when women present themselves for leadership positions and for promotions. And this is true in the academy or the university as it is across business and politics. One of the things we've done in Trinity is to introduce a process of training for all of all people who sit on promotions boards, and we will roll this out also in terms of interview panels, to ensure that they are trained to interrogate their own unconscious bias, to ensure that they are not um, expecting higher standards of women than of men. Gender diversity in teams does lead to more creativity and innovation, and I'm proud of the way Trinity College has engaged with that and recognises the importance of it. Uh, I'm proud in the way that our uh, classes in science and engineering are, particularly in science, uh, more in balance and I think it's improving as the years go by in engineering. Uh, our young graduates, when they go out uh, to work, will be working in more gender diverse teams and they need to learn that here when they're students. So I'm proud of that and I think it's an important part of our educational offering. So as Vice Provost, I have a very privileged role. I can see the excellence across the university amongst our students and amongst our young academics and amongst our senior academics. And one of the great pleasures is to see how dynamic and brilliant many of our young women are. So I have great hopes for the future as long as our institution can recognise and reward the excellence among women. Uh, and in terms of uh, what my hopes for the future are, I would really love to be there and to see Trinity's first female scientist uh, be given a Nobel Prize. When I started the job first of Provost, people would ask me what my legacy would want to be and they would expect me to say a big building here or a big building there. But I think a great legacy for any Provost would be a greater diversity in the college community and a stronger college community, a college community by virtue of its diversity better able to meet the challenges of the future.